Well, good morning and welcome to Coffee with the Pastor. Uh, glad you're joining us today or watching it later as it's uh, recorded. Uh, we're talking about grace and space, how to give people grace and space and how to ask for grace and space for yourself. So that you can get along with people that you disagree with. Uh, yesterday I was reading an article, I think it was in USA Today, about Katy Perry. And Katy Perry has a huge... Uh, Twitter following, and she was big for Biden and Harris and had campaigned for them and endorsed them and all. But after the election, she called, she had a lot of family who voted for Trump and, and all. And so she called all of her family members and, and just told them that she loved them and that, you know, tried to help console them and let them know she didn't want bad feelings between them and all. And then she tweeted that. Well, on her Twitter account, she received thousands of negative things. And a lot of people said, anybody who voted for Trump, we're not going, we're disassociating with family, whatever, we're not gonna have anything to do with them. And I thought, how sad that there's so many people in our country that would, you know, not, be with their family or, or disassociate with family members because they disagreed over their politics. How do you deal with a culture like that? How, how do you handle that? And that's what we're talking about. Jesus had that same kind of thing in his day, uh, both in politics and religion. And the Pharisees were a group that were really feeding that. And we're going to read about that today. I uh, remember yesterday we talked about how uh, Jesus called Matthew or he, in uh, Levi is another name he uses or he has and uh, he was a tax collector so he would have been hated by the Jews and he called him to be one of his disciples well he's going to go have uh, dinner at, at his house and let's look and see what happens this is in Mark chapter 2 beginning with verse 15 while Jesus was having dinner at Levi's house, many tax collectors and sinners were eating with him and his disciples. For there were many who followed him. When the teachers of the law, who were Pharisees, saw him eating with the sinners and tax collectors, they asked his disciples, Why does he eat with tax collectors and sinners? On hearing this, Jesus said to them, It is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. And so Matthew hosts a party for him. He's excited about being a follower of Jesus. He probably has one of the bigger houses in town. And so he hosts a, a dinner and then invites his friends. Well, obviously, since he's been a tax collector, his friends are probably going to be other tax collectors and sinners because the religious folks in, the, in town would have nothing to do with Matthew. So Matthew invites his friends. Well, Jesus and his disciples go and have dinner at uh, Matthew's house. And it very well may have been in the courtyard because their houses weren't very big, but they may have uh, had it in the courtyard so everybody could see. And the Pharisees and teachers of law walked by and they saw Jesus eating with those folks. And they were just aghast that Jesus would have anything to do with those kind of people. Um, and Jesus just looked at them and he said, you know, it's not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. And I've come not to call the righteous, but sinners. These folks need help. These folks need it. I'm here. Uh, you know, uh, Mark Lowry has said something. He said, you know, you don't want to read the red letter portion of the Bible because it'll mess you up. And for you not familiar, the red letter portions are the things that Jesus said and Jesus taught directly. And if you look at what Jesus did, he hung around with people. Um, he hung around with tax collectors. He hung around with sinners. He hung around with prostitutes. And one of the things I worry about a little bit about our church today is that we don't seem to have a lot of friends outside the church. We don't seem to hang out with folks who, who need the Lord. And that's a problem. And uh, uh, I have a had a friend one time that they hosted what they called Matthew parties. And uh, 
in their church, he would ask people to buy a table and then invite, like they, they had 10 per table and they would invite nine people who didn't know the Lord, didn't go to church anywhere, didn't know the Lord, at least were unchurched. And they would invite in some big speaker, you know, maybe a football player or a politician or somebody that was a Christian to speak to them and then they would give them the invitation at the end. But the idea was, was that bring in people, not your Christian friends, but your non-Christian friends. And that's what Jesus did. And, and I'm amazed at Jesus, how he's the only perfect person to ever live on this earth. The only one. And he calls us to live a perfect life. He says, be you perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. He calls us to be holy. And yet, it is amazing to me how sinners, tax collectors, sinners, prostitutes, who you name it, whoever, are so comfortable around Jesus. Somehow they don't feel judged. Somehow they don't feel, uh, it seems like there's hope there. And, and I really think that it's because Jesus is love. I mean, God is love and Jesus love. And love attracts people. And uh, you can't fool people. You have to really love people. And so I encourage you today to maybe have a Matthew party sometime. Invite all your unchristian friends to dinner and hang around them some. And, uh, and share with them Jesus because uh, they need him, as do we all. Well, tomorrow we've got another uh, issue with the Pharisees that we're going to look at. And so uh, I'll see you tomorrow, and you have a blessed day today.